what if we applied all the love songs, all the passionate longings, all the hopes and dreams that we've had for others to ourselves instead? I know it sounds kind of silly, but what if we gave ourselves the same grace, the same leniency, the same chances that we give to others that we love, our husbands, our wives, our kids? In fact, heck, sometimes we give more grace to a stranger in the market line than we do ourselves. My name is Robin Reynolds. I am a systems engineer and a coach living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I know that we can align our lives to our dearest dreams and desires, and I'd love to help you do that. Hey, I'm wondering, first of all, I'm in a real January mood today, and here in Albuquerque, the weather is in lockstep with that. It doesn't feel like the hot desert at all. It's dreary, it's overcast. And, you know, every once in a while, that's good for a change. Have you heard Miley Cyrus's new song? It's called Flowers. It's all over the internet right now. And I'll actually pop a link to it um, if I can near this video so that you can see it. The song really just, um, I love it, by the way. I like it a lot. I like I like the message, I like the music, I like the beat, but more than anything, I wanted to talk to you about what it made me recall. As I'm listening to this song, I remembered a day several years ago where I left work in a chaotic rush. I ran out to my truck and then had to fight traffic across town to get to my therapist's office on time. It was so ironic that every time I was rushing to get to this woman's office, I ended up there just a chaotic ball of nerves because there wasn't enough time to get there. And uh, by the time I got there, I was probably not in the best frame of mind to calmly, rationally sit and discuss my life. Anyway, I'm driving that day and instead of listening to a podcast or an audio book, I put on music, probably a, a playlist prepared by YouTube. I had this sudden and kind of uh, epiphany sort of revelation as I was listening to music, just mindlessly playing as I was driving. I realized most of the pop culture songs that are out there are actually talking about very dysfunctional relationships. Let's face it, most pop culture songs are about romantic or sexual relationships. You don't get a ton in there about families and friends and all of that. A little here and there, um, especially in the country genre, but for the most part, it's wild, romantic, passionate love that we are chasing out there as a culture and as a society, and our music reflects that. So as I'm listening to these songs, I realize that in many of them, it was unrequited love. A person had lost themselves because they didn't have the person that they wanted in their lives. They were rudderless. They were directionless. They were not okay without the other person. It was very codependent kind of love. They would do anything, turn their lives upside down and become a person that didn't align with who they really were to get this person or get this person back or keep this person. And then another type of uh, song that I noticed was songs about sex, right? It, it was sort of devoid of real deep meaning or um, connection, but about looks and um, sex really. It, so as I I began noticing these. I, of course, rushed into my therapist and talked to her about it. Um, and that was a good conversation. But I began to notice it more and more and more. I'm not opposed to pop music. I love music, actually. But now I hear it with a little bit of a different ear. I can still enjoy the song and enjoy the beat. But a lot of times I realize when I hear the words that those are not behaviors that I would like to 
develop in my relationships, any kind of relationship in my life, friend, family, um, romantic or intimate relationship. And so today I'm thinking, gosh, you guys, what if we began to notice not just songs, but songs is a very good place to start. If you're listening to some music, consider what if you were singing these songs to yourself? If someone trying to get um, the love of their life in this music is trying to get to know someone better, is trying to um, connect with them, even thinking they are fantastic looking and hot, why can't we think those things about ourselves? Can we begin to notice the ways that we seek attention from others, that we seek knowledge about others, that we offer them things, grace, that we offer them love, that we offer them hope, that we offer them our time and our attention and our service? And can we also turn that kind of love on ourselves? I'm not saying that whatever relationships we have in our lives aren't important. Of course they are. If you're married or you're in a long-term relationship or you're dating or you just have family and friends around you, of course we have to maintain those relationships as well. But what if we added to it romancing ourselves, getting to know what it is we really think and love and want. Have you ever been dating someone or in a relationship with them? And when you find out what their favorite food is, you want to invite them over for a home cooked meal. You want to provide them a beautiful, peaceful, nurturing and caring atmosphere and meal, don't you? What if instead of pushing our voice to the side, what if we actually took the time to notice? And I hope you've been hearing that I'm using the word notice a lot. That's my theme for this month. That's what I'm really focusing on. I'm not even concerned about taking action yet. I'm just noticing because the more we notice, the more we can see patterns, the more we can begin to understand how we're behaving in the world whether it's in conscious or unconscious ways. And the more we can start to notice where we have inconsistencies or incoherence between what our heart really says and wants and the ways that we are behaving and acting in the world. So my uh, my strong call to action for you is... Begin to notice all of the ways that you care for others. And then ask yourself, is there a gap? Am I caring for myself the same way? Do I even understand what it is that I want or what I'm about? What my true dreams and desires are? I have a five-day creative challenge going on right now. You are not late. You can start anytime. And if you hop on over to my website, you can um, go to this link, which is my website, robin-reynolds.com backslash challenge, or you can just hop on over to my website. You'll see the challenge right there on the front. And the reason I bring this up is writing, diving deeply into what's in here. It is a great way to begin to notice and get to know some of the thoughts and feelings and desires maybe even frustrations or gaps. It's a better way to get to know yourself, my friends. That's what we're doing over here. And take my word for it, the better you know yourself, the more you can succeed and excel at whatever it is you are doing. Raising a family, creating a career, a business. Maybe you're an entrepreneur and you are leading a business. However it is that you're interacting in the world, whatever system you're in, whatever people are in that system, you and those systems and the people will benefit from you having increased knowledge of yourself. So let's do this together. Hop on over to my website, 
join in the challenge and I will see you there. It's completely free, of course, and it's just my way of saying, let's get started. This is really important. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I'll see you right on over at my website, robin-reynolds.com backslash challenge. Bye-bye. See you next time.